guys. Today I want to talk about my San Pedro experience. I will try to keep it as short and as interesting as possible, but uh, I can't promise because it's still um, I'm still processing it, and I know it's probably not the best idea to do it um, like I did yesterday the ceremony. So to do it one day after, but um, so I have to leave the place, and um, I want to show you and I want to talk about my experience um, at the place um, where it happened because this is a good, very good opportunity for me. All right. Anyway, for those of you who have no idea what St. Petro is, St. Petro is no drug, no chemical drug or anything. St. Petro is um, a cactus which has been used as a medicine for over um, thousands and thousands of years. Nobody has actually an idea about um, when the Incas or pre Incas started using St. Petro as a medicine to cure any kind of um, mental illness or to especially to connect with the nature. Okay, that's everything I want to say about San Pedro, why it is. Um, we started, so when you take San Pedro, you do it in a like kind of ceremony um, mode, and um, you start drinking um, two cups, um, I don't know, 250 milliliters, each cup or something, or a bit less, but that's actually not important. And also, like all, we did like many rituals, um, like with, um, for example, um, flower and um, flower um, taste water, which they put on my head and my fingers, and you could smell. It was beautiful, but many many things. But I just want to talk about an experience. Otherwise, the video is going to be very very long. So, um. I drank the first cup down there in the village where I lived and worked with the shaman who I did the um, who I did the ceremony with. That was really important for me because um, I wanted to know the guy who I'm doing the ceremony with because it's you kind of need to trust um, the people and trust the shaman and I really trusted Christian and um, I enjoyed it and it was good and I feel really safe. And I no, don't recommend doing it by yourself, just buying some petrol and just oh, <laughs> drinking it and um, trying to connect to nature. Whatever. That's not, it's, I think, not a really good idea and a little bit dangerous. Okay. But if you do it in a good community, in a good, with a good shaman, it's safe. It's all good. So no, no worries at all. So first cup down there, about 8 o'clock. I got up, you don't eat anything. Cup, really disgusting, salty, little... Yeah, I don't know. It's a weird taste. You don't want to drink this every day, but <laughs> it's um, yeah, it's definitely worth it. So after that, we went up here, beautiful, um, a beautiful way. We saw sheep's already and donkeys, and they are you know, just walking up here on, to um, yeah, places. And um, I didn't feel anything. And then we arrived at the cross. We took the second cup here. I became really tired, didn't have any food, I was hungry. And then um, I kind of just laid down on this ground here. Now I would think it's not really nice, it's stones, it's like really, really uncomfortable. But for me, at this moment, it felt awesome. It felt like a bed. And then I waited. And one banana, which was felt so great, and um, we started making music. He had like a, uh, different instruments, a flute, and a, I don't know what it's called, Maultrommel in German, and uh, remind me of my place at home, which um, may be a bit emotional as well at the beginning. And after three hours, at eleven o'clock. Started, um, yeah, I saw 
started crying because I felt a lot of love. I felt so much love. Um, I connected to my family at home. And um, it felt so good. I felt so, so good. came and asked me what's going on and talked to me a little bit and he put me those flower water in the face which smelled beautiful and then you kind of open up again look at the sky and the sky was blue as yesterday super blue like perfect just perfect and I could see those little crystal So I could see those things and now they don't make sense for me but when I um, was in this state of mind and this emotional, I, they, those things um, started um, like becoming, like moving in a kind of formation like mandalas and um, they connected with the little pieces of um, clouds they were well not many clouds but the little clouds which were there they connected with those pieces and then the whole sky became like a huge mandala it made, made so much sense and i felt like really i'm, I'm really connecting to <laughs> the sky and the sun and there's the energy of the sun yeah and um yeah i wanted to make a video of this <laughs> it sounds so crazy now <laughs> it sounds so crazy to make a video of the things I see, but I knew it's not gonna it's not gonna be on the phone because the phone probably yeah, so it's, it's not possible. So I started the selfie mode here and hold the camera like this and said one word and I just started crying again. I thought I wanted to say it, it makes so much sense now and everything and I'm happy. I was so happy I couldn't talk anymore. <laughs> I was just crying so much. Yeah, it's felt really good. Now we're at the place where I took off my shoes and um, tried to connect with the ground and the grass and the stones. And it looked exactly like this. I put my, my feet on this grass I felt the grass and I felt, I don't know, the texture and everything and it was so alive and it is still alive. So I don't know, it was just so different and I, I, I did the first step on this black stone and the black stone uh, was warm but you couldn't really feel the warmth and um, then I stepped on normal grass was a normal temperature and um, you know taking off the shoes and doing such a ceremony is definitely the best recommendation this was the place where I, s I tried to make the video of um, like the sky and the mandalas and stuff which I knew it's not gonna work then I started crying really hard then the shaman came put down a little bit and help me and put me things as I said and um, then Shaman went to this place this place here and this freaked me out so what you see here is a cracked stone so a huge stone like I can just walk inside the stone and when I was sitting in here, it was hailing. Now it's not hailing right now. But I was hailing. And you felt the energy, what it's like necessary to crack a stone like that. Then you look around and you see all those beautiful things. Those stones and those trees and the grass, the ground, the sky and the mountains. 
think like, wow, I'm just a guest on this planet. I'm just sitting here and watch this for my little time I got. Because I don't have that much time. You know, I only have maybe 80 years, maybe 100 years if I'm good. But um, 100 years is nothing. So the stone sits here for a million years. So this is a complete different time scale we're living in. So I was seeing all those stones about how they how they sit here and I saw like the texture of the stones. I touched them. I saw okay, this stone must have been under water for a long time before like humans and whatever was there. And now it's sitting here on three thousand five hundred meters over sea level. That's just crazy. And um I was walking over the stones and uh, tried to think. <laughs> yeah, sorry, that's uh, it's really crazy, but I was like thinking like a stone, walking over the stones, and I really connected. I was then later sitting on this, um, like laying on on this uh, crack and looking in the sky felt like so forceless, super weak. I was just sitting here with no control, like no control, but no sense about my own feelings, which was really good because if you don't think about, um, if you don't think about um, like what you feel right now, all those things in your head, all those rubbish you think about every day, and then uh, you think about I'm cold, I'm warm, to pee or whatever you know those things they keep you not concentrating on things so you can't concentrate on small things or on a stone or on the nature not really a hundred percent like a hundred percent of your concentration in the thing you want to you want to discover you want to get to know you want to get information from and I did so I was just laying here, forceless, and I was seeing the world and the grass, and I saw the grass growing, and I saw um, how things change really fast when you stone. So the humans, they walk around here, they're happy, they waste. Place. They put plastic bottles here. That freaked me out as well. The plastic and uh, those things we do anyway. But everybody knows this. But <laughs> you feel it just differently when you <laughs> when you're a stone. It's it's really true. It's true. And if you're watching those things, and then you, uh, you you got it. You got it. You're just <laughs> as a human. You have just very little time on this planet to do good things or to not destroy the nature or harm the nature or a little bit of time we got to appreciate and respect what we have here. It's <laughs> it sounds totally easy, but it does come from somewhere I read in a book. It comes from inside after discovering all those things. So... Um, this is for me still makes complete new sense right now. Okay, part of the ceremony is sometimes you you smoke a cigarette, the shaman smokes and blows the air in every direction to um, thank Puchamama, Mother Earth, for the um, for everything like mountains, sky, so so uh, sun, sun. I want to say that I smoked the cigarette after becoming a stone in my head and um, that like I thought wow I, I'm a cigarette like for the stone we're like cigarettes we get lit up and we burn down burn down burn down burn down after five minutes three minutes we're gone we're ash Around, be gone. More cigarettes, and uh, the stone can see us like. Seven
cigarette. So for him, like this fellow, he thinks I'm not sitting here for an hour. I'm sitting here for him, like a few seconds. He feels like it's just a few seconds sitting here, and then bam, he's gone. Ash. Next, more humans, and then he's waiting, and he's so patient, and he's so respectful. And if you take the stone and turn it around. Stone doesn't care, it just, don't, just sits there and waits and knows still more than you. And it's not, still not um, telling you anything. <laughs> Alright guys, arrived at the tree, at my first tree I connected to yesterday. So, this tree is, um, it looks really just <laughs> not special, but for me, this is, um, it means a lot. Concentrated on following things. There's, um, like those little branch coming out here. And there's, um, like the peel and those things here. And then you see the texture. You see all those little cracks. Little small cracks. So I was touching it. And then... I was concentrating just on one thing. For example, I was just concentrating on this branch. And when I did that, like, it took like 10 seconds probably. 10 seconds, 100% concentration just on this tree, the tree and me. No, nothing else. That's, that's the secret, I think. So, and I was looking at this, and I could see it growing coming out here really slowly and you saw this little thing going, going, going crazy and uh, bigger and everything and then I saw how those cracks get bigger and smaller like the tree is um, kind of breathing kind of a hard, hard um, beat and um, I could really feel it so and then after um, seeing that I hugged the tree because I just felt like it <laughs> tree hugging imagine but <laughs> I did so I hugged this tree and tried to put my heart onto the onto the lock and then I connected to someone that's a bit personal now but I connected to someone and I could feel, I could feel the tree living and, and, and um, like kind of breathing, really. And this was, this was my first tree experience. Um, the second time, the second uh, one, I really want to show you as well because it was even more powerful, I think. Okay. So, and while we are walking back to the house. We are passing this area here with all those small trees, eucalyptus, I think, and um, smelling on it and feeling it. It was it was great. But then I turned around this way, and I saw those huge trees. You can't even see the top. A really huge, super huge, amazing. So. I had no idea what the shaman is doing, but I had to go in there. I said, "Sorry, man, I'm there. I need to. I need to go there." So I went straight in here, straight in the straight in the forest. That's a tree. Or put it this way: this tree and this tree. I got two ones. This is the mama. This is the big tree. Lots of experience. Really smart. This. This is um like little baby or the kid. He's just growing, just making a lot of things up there. You know. Um, it's not. I think with more experience, another 50 years or something. So anyway. First thing I noticed was the ground. The 
ground. I can't feel the ground right now. Because I got shoes on. I protect myself. I protect myself from being connected to this beautiful nature. But I know it's necessary. You know? it's not, I'm not um, becoming like a hippie and walk around the city without shoes and everything. Because that's not, for me not the same. Um, because in the city you got asphalt, concrete, everything. You're not con you're not actually con connecting to nature, so that doesn't make sense for me. But I want to say, I took shoes off, and it was even more beautiful and connection, and you could feel energy flowing from the feet into your heart. <laughs> no, it's, it's and I'm just describing this. I don't expect you to understand. I just uh, want to share my experience here. So shoes off and then I was laying on like in between those two trees and I was putting my two feet here and my two hands here on this one and now looking at it in a like a bit more technical perspective you have 25 meters times force this is a lot of power this tree needs to balance so this one is going from the center, from the center, like five meters in every direction. The same for the big one, big mama. But the big mama is safe. At this one, I could feel uh, this one down here. If you at at the ground, down here, you could feel all those little, um, like what a tree is doing. So you could feel how. Um, all those little fibers, how they balance out the, the force which is applied up on top. And this is a lot. So, what I got out of it at the end is that we, you know, there's this Mount Baum uh, tree meditation you can do, which is um, getting a bit more popular probably in Germany right now at least. And um, I think I thought about that and I thought about, okay. This tree is a 50 years old, and the other one is maybe 100 or more. So they are old. They are. They have much more power and much more energy and um, like balance than we have. So maybe it would be okay to steal a little bit of this um, balance energy from them to focus a bit more. So. That was that was what I learned um, from the trees. When I was laying here for half an hour, hour, I couldn't move. I was saying this is a great experience. I want to tell you one more thing. Um, it's about the water, and uh, after that, I'm going to finish the video because I think it's going to be already a little bit long. Anyway, I'm walking down to the village and came to this place or crossed this um, little river here um, I had to stop because I heard um, screaming like a voice I thought okay well whatever but I haven't really um, spent so much time with the water so far because up there is not much water just a little bit that's not really much, but this is um, definitely bigger. So um, I got this little stick, and uh, I put this stick here in the water, somewhere there. And I was looking at this spot here. And uh, again, after five or ten seconds, uh, I hear the screaming again, really hard. And I understood that the water here is really unhappy. This, um, they are natural, like the water can flow naturally um, down um, the river, or you can um, build an artificial kennel or anything. So, this is definitely the artificial uh, kennel, and the water has to flow. Like on some points much faster and some points much slower than it actually wants and, and it actually wants and um, 
This makes the wall really unhappy. Now I have to admit, uh, I can't hear it screaming. And um, I just don't have the concentration right now. So because my head is already, already like uh, leaving the place while you after and couch surfing and whatever. And I just can't concentrate right now. And that's already um, the big point. So I want to uh, say one more thing uh, about me. I saw Gusta Shaman today. He asked me um, what kind of animals I saw. So I actually didn't see many animals, but dogs. Like in the sky, it was this one moment where it's just dogs running around, and like the, all the clouds became dogs from the same, um, were like the same kind of dogs everywhere. And he said, "All right, so you are a dog person, and like your spiritual spiritual animal is a dog, and this is a really good sign because a dog can uh, be really uh, like trustworthy." A dog can be really nice and like quiet and listening to you like really, um, really well. And uh, dog can also be uh, aggressive sometimes. We have like um, moments where the dog has to defend um, the owner. Or sometimes, you know, dog gets a little bit um, aggressive as well. So it's a really good mixture and it's a really good sign for me. And um, he also said I'm, I have the like possibility to connect to dogs, right? Puma! <laughs> because I got the dog actually here. So this is Puma, my friend. And um, he was there yesterday in the ceremony as well. And he um, was the whole time with me. Every time I drifted away to some other planet, he uh, left me alone and then he started yeah, looking for me again and coming back and like sitting next to me in order to get pet and everything. Yeah, this is Puma. Yeah. And um, maybe I got a really special connection to dogs. This is new for me. I will see. Another example for connection to dogs. They all really love me. This is the end of the video about my St. Pedro experience. Um, all in all, what I learned, to put really, really short, um, is to respect the nature much, much, much more in a complete different way, which I never thought before. And as well, I learned that we need to, um, nowadays especially, because you have so many things going on all the time with your mobile phone and everything. Okay, I'm not different. Um, we need to try to um, to concentrate more. We need to, or I need to. I don't want to talk for everyone. It's my experience and it's my what I think. So I need to concentrate on things much more um, and um, spend a bit more time on concentrating, on trying to concentrate because sometimes you just try and then you move on and you're not really connecting and you're not really getting information of um, things you know it doesn't need to be a tree or a stone it can also be just um, another guy you're talking to or something if you really try to connect if you really concentrate on this on this person I'm definitely sure you um, um, like conversations and um, like all the socializing is going to be so much better and um, yeah that's two things which are mo like most important for me I learned many many more uh, also the video could have been so much longer but uh, I tried to make it short but I hmm, alright didn't really make it um, I like I wouldn't recommend uh, it to anyone um, only if you're really feeling ready for uh, the experience, if you're really uh, feeling ready for um, those spirits behind the plant, and uh, you should really respect um, the spirit and the ceremony, and you should find a shaman which you trust and which you feel.
feel really safe with. Because if the shaman is alright, no problem. I would say it's no problem. And if you want to know who I did it with, uh, just ask me, no problem. Or if you have any other questions, uh, just ask me. Um, to any message and um, that's it I thank you very much for watching wish you all the best and bye bye the gates are open and the truth